Hi everyone, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my October wrap up and my November TBR. <laughs> I'm saying that so particularly because I've been messing it up every time. I'm like September, November, December. I don't know what month it is. Breathe me in, breathe me out. All right, so let's start with the October wrap up, but stay tuned for the end of the video because I have two readathons I'm participating in, which is why there's a TBR portion. For this video but anyway so I read six books this month and it might not seem like a lot but they were all really huge like the Devil's Night series is huge and the books are like 400 to 600 pages so I'm using that as an excuse <laughs> but I'm happy you know it was a good month for me I was chilling so first I am going to go over the Devil's Night series which I'm not going to go too much in detail because I did make a whole video on it I'll link it up in the cards but I made a whole video on reading the Devil's Night series by Penelope Douglas and those books are Corrupt, Hideaway, Kill Switch, and Nightfall. And it follows the four horsemen who wreak havoc on the town on Devil's Night so they cause fires, they do a bunch of shady shit, and it's really good because each book follows a different horsemen and their love story. Very like dark romancy. it's so good, I really liked it. And the first book I gave three stars, the second book I gave four stars, and then the last two I gave five stars. But if you want to see more thoughts in depth, definitely go watch that video. I'll link it and put it in the description for you. But as a synopsis, I liked Kill Switch the best and Damon is my favorite horseman. <laughs> and then I also read Credence by Penelope Douglas, which was a trip, let me tell you. This is what got me into Penelope Douglas. So I read it in the beginning of the month before I read Devil's Night. And oh my god, am I obsessed. Because, okay. So it takes place in Colorado, which is really awesome because oh, Colorado is so beautiful. So if you look up Credence Aesthetic on Pinterest, you'll get what I'm saying. Because it's like a dark version of a snowy cliche cheesy romance but it's dark romance so it's snowy we're in the mountains we're isolated with three men <sighs> literally i can't tell you how good this book was i loved it because the main character was going through so much trauma and she didn't know how to be loved and that was part of the reason why I just really fell in love with this book because I could connect to her on such a deep level with the stuff that she was going through. So her parents die in the beginning. It's not a spoiler or anything, but her parents never like loved her. She was kind of neglected. She gets this call from her step uncle and he's like, hey, so I just found out I have custody over you. She's turning 18 in like three months or something. And she's like, what i don't even know who this guy is it's her dad's stepbrother so they're not related by blood keep that in mind because <laughs> because you just should keep that in mind <laughs> so she ends up going to colorado she's from california and it's a whole new world for her and he has two sons and let me just tell you it gets really steamy it gets really steamy girl so if you want a steamy, snowy, just amazing aesthetic vibes, because I'm just, oh, it was just such an amazing setting. I think that's what really did it for me, but I'm not sure what it was that just made it such a five star. I think it was also the love interests, all three of them. <laughs> and one of them doesn't speak because he also has trauma. It was just a whole thing about trauma too. Like it wasn't just a love story or a romance book. It had a plot that made me cry. It had a depth to it. I could go on and on, but it was definitely five stars and I highly, highly recommend if you like taboo romances. But again, this one isn't that taboo because they're actually not blood related. So it's hard to say that it's taboo, but it's like light taboo, I would say. So anyway, recommend that one. <laughs> Next, I read The Black Flamingo by Dean Adda. I read this with my friend Lois and friends, 
And oh my gosh, it was amazing to talk with people that have different experiences in life than me. It was such a good experience. If you haven't done a buddy read with multiple people, I highly recommend because they give a different perspective on life. And it was just amazing to hear their thoughts and, and see the book from a different perspective as I was reading it as well. This one follows a mixed race gay man as he's going through life and it deals with family. Oh, it just is so good. It has commentary on conformity, family, race, internalized racism, identity, loving yourself. It follows him throughout his life. And in college, he discovers drag. And that's the first time that he can really be himself and feel like he has a place. And it's just amazing. It's written in verse. And I really love books written in verse. I give this 4.5 stars. The reason being that if you read this book, you'll know what I'm saying, but his best friend Daisy, I wanted a little bit more from her story and what she was dealing with in terms of race and identity for herself. I wanted more about her family and stuff like that because we didn't get a lot of backstory with her, so I would have liked to see that. But other than that, it was just really good and I would highly recommend as a really short, impactful read. So I just realized I told you I read six books, but I actually read like eight. I don't know what I'm reading, but I have two more books. So one of them was the Winer's Book Club pick and that was The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. This one follows a man who is being cheated on by his wife and he's on an airplane in the beginning of the book and he's saying to the person next to him that his wife is cheating on him. He kind of wants to kill her. And then the girl next to him says, well, why don't we plan this murder then? And that's the, the story. Like, we go on this journey. But I didn't particularly like it that much. I gave it a three star. I can't give away too much, but there's lots of perspectives in this book. And I felt that like 30% of the way through, the perspectives were meshing together and they didn't have their own voices as much. And then some of the twists, I saw coming. I don't necessarily hate that in books, but in this particular book, I didn't enjoy it too much. Yeah, I think with thrillers, it can be hard sometimes to figure out what you like and how to find thrillers that you like based on other people's opinions because I think thrillers are some of the most polarizing books out there because of the fact that they often have twists or they have open-ended endings and then some people love the twists in one book and they hate the twist in another and then you never know like how you're gonna fall which is why goodreads always has thrillers in like the three 3.5 star zone so you just never know what you're getting with a thriller but it was good i gave it three stars i thought it was entertaining and short and then the last book that i read was pumpkin heads which is a graphic novel about a boy and a girl who have been friends for a while they work at the pumpkin patch together but they only see each other once a year like at the pumpkin patch but this is their last year working there, so they really want to take advantage of their last moments. And the guy has had a crush on this girl for a while, so his friend is trying to get him to ask her out. Meanwhile, they're wondering if maybe they're the ones that should be together. It's super cute. It's good. I think I rated it three stars or four stars. I don't know. It was nothing special, but I really enjoyed the aesthetics because it does take place in like an apple orchard and it has all those really cool fall vibes, which is why I decided to read that one this month. So those were all the books that I read in the month of October. So let's get on to my November TBR, which is going to be just my readathons TBR because I am a mood reader. So I'm participating in the Hannah Montana Readathon, which is hosted by some of my good friends here on YouTube. They are Mare Reads, Jess from Books Past Bedtime, Kirsten from Kirsten's Corner, and Haley. I'll link their channels in the description. And then I'm also participating in Darian Reads' Taylor Swift Playlistathon, which is going to be at the end of November, but also trickle into December as well. So the Hannah Montana Readathon is actually going on right now until the 7th, so you have about four days to participate, but it's a really chill and just a fun way to get started on your reading for November. The first book that I'm reading is Flock by Kate Stewart. Now, I don't know much about any of these books, let me tell you, because I'm really bad at going in blind to books. I just saw this one on Kindle Unlimited and I thought it looked steamy and good. And it has a really good rating on Goodreads, but I have a gist because I just started it. 
So this girl, she was in a relationship and she was engaged, but she ended up calling it off because she felt like she could never love anyone the way she loved the people that she loved back in her old life in this town. And so she's driving back to this town where there was this man that she really loved. I think there's two men actually. I don't know, but they're like a bad boy or something. So she's going back after many years. And so there's gonna be some second chance romance perhaps. I'm not sure, but it looks like it's gonna be a fun time. So I picked that one for two of the prompts. One of them being, he could be the one. And then the other one being, I wanna know you. So I did the underhyped book and then the just a romance book. And that's two prompts slashed out with one book. And then the next book that I'm gonna read is Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas, because I read all Penelope Douglas's books except that one now and the bully series. But for Punk 57 is about pen pals. And I think it's a hate to love because they clash in real life, like the pen pals. But I can't be certain because again, I don't know much about these books. But that one fulfills the prompt, nobody's perfect, morally great character, and then best of both worlds, dual perspectives. Cause I believe Penelope usually does dual perspectives. Next, I wanna pick up Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. This one I'm really excited to read and it's really short so I figured it'd be good for this short readathon but this one fulfills the prompts rock star five star prediction. The reason that this is a five star prediction is because Books and Lala really likes it and when she really likes a book that's weird I usually enjoy it and then she's got nerve because I believe this has a little bit of a horror aspect to it. It's a ghost story about trauma. Yeah. It's a modern ghost story about trauma and survival, chosen family, and rebirth. And that's all I know about it because Books and Law said not to go into it with any info. So I'm not going to. Next, I'm going to pick up In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Mikado. This one is recently hyped by Noelle Gallagher and Peter Beck Dreams. So, and it's a nonfiction. Who is she? I never read nonfiction. You guys know this. If you've been watching me for a while, I'm scared of nonfiction. I am nervous, but I started this. I'm on page like 30. It's beautiful. The writing is amazing. It reads like fiction. So this one is a, it's kind of a horror memoir. She tried to make it a little bit in the horror field because it's a tragic story. So it's a female, female abusive relationship. Um, true story. So it's gonna be really hard hitting. That's why I'm taking it slow because if I read it in one day, I oftentimes get in this really bad slump with sad books. So this one sounds really amazing and I'm reading this for the hyped prompt, which is the climb. And then lastly, I have two prompts left. Those being if we were a movie and true friend, which is strong friendships and then a book that would be a good movie which I picked off their list of recommendations, American Royals by Catherine McGee. It is about an alternative America where George Washington became king. So it's a monarchy. And I hear that the drama is juicy, which I'm always here for. So those are my plans for the rest of this week. And then for the Taylor Swift playlist-a-thon, I have a few books that I'm going to be reading in November. One of them being the Winer's Book Club pick, which is Legend Born. And this one follows a King Arthur retelling with a really strong female protagonist. So this one will follow that prompt from the Fearless album, You Belong With Me prompt. Another one that I definitely wanna to get to is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And Darian's also reading this this month, so that's exciting. But it also follows the prompt Forever and Always, which is a book that follows a long period of time. And then the last one that I wanted to plan for November is another one off the Fearless album. The reason I'm picking off the Fearless album is because I'm not a huge Taylor Swift fan and the only album that I really, really loved was Fearless back when I was a teenager. So that's why I picked this album to use. So the last prompt I'm gonna be doing is The Way I Loved You, which is Read an Enemies to Lovers. And this one I'm gonna pick Menace, which I'm so excited about. It's a mafia romance and that's all I really know about it but it's super hyped on romance booktube and it follows, I think like they're in separate mafias. I'm not too sure, but I know it's really hyped and I really wanna read it. So I'm gonna do that one this month as well. I hope you enjoyed this video 
and I have a lot of exciting things planned for November. When I tell you that you're going to be so shook on November 19th, you're gonna be so shook. Your mind is gonna be blown. It's gonna be an amazing time. So stay tuned for that. I also have a lot of tags coming to you because I've been tagged in a lot and I haven't done them. So I need to do them. But the next video that you're gonna be seeing is the booktube gratitude tag, which will feature a lot of amazing creators here on YouTube. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.